once again, man, thanks for rocking with us tonight. Thanks for having us. Hell yeah, man. It's dope. Pleasure. Very dope. Um, so, on, obviously, you're still on the road right now. Um, for all those uninitiated that have not heard of Kung Fu Vampire, what would you, you know, just tell on somebody that's never heard of Kung Fu Vampire, like how to describe your style? It's like, it's a, we're a Puerto Rican death metal group. Um, some of my favorite. <laughs> we integrate a little bit of salsa and some polka. The thing about the polka part of it, it's drum and bass polka. It's kind of an old school throwback to techno. And um, no rap, rap is crap. There's a little country singing. And uh, <laughs> I think, nah, for real, uh, if, you, if you haven't heard of Kung Fu Vampire, we are all encompassing hip hop alternative, live band, you know. <laughs> funky, some dark, some happy, and uh, most of it's more re reality than fantasy, honestly. Yeah, um, as far as like a lot of a lot of the stuff you do, I mean, I, I really like, one of the things that drew me to listening to you guys in the first place was how that you could switch up your flow and, you know, go all over the place from like fast to slow and just, you know, really set the mood on tracks with your vocals in addition to like the instrumentation like instrumental stuff you had behind. Um, as far as hip hop goes, who are like three of the, like, the bigger influences on you, just off the top of your head maybe, that like really helped you get where you were going? Cypress Hill, yeah, The Far Side, and Digital Underground. Yes. Straight up. Three very young influences, Breakdance Era, love those three groups. Of course, NWA, Ice Cube's first few albums. And um, this guy's out bearding me right now. He's got a great Dude, beer. I used He's the, missing the middle part. Something ha I think he got burnt. He was okay. making coffee. <laughs> Espresso machine. He's missing. He's out bearding me like a motherfucker. He's got a great beard with the hair mixture. Hard, hard to do an interview with that you know, with beard. <laughs> really. I mean, he's using beard oil. I'm sure you get on Mars. They ship it down. Elon Musk is making some beard oil on Mars. Ships it right to kick butt coffee. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, man, if I wore beer oil out here, it would just like fry in the fucking sun, man. That that oh, Dr. Bronner's, okay. the fucking hippie soap. Well, I'm on my second. That. I'm on my second day of beard oil ever in my life. <laughs> I bought one yesterday. I heard they got it. foam too. I haven't tried that. I used it yesterday. I used it today, and I don't see it doing anything. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping to give it some shimmer or something. It didn't. Hey man, just keep trying. Eventually, it'll like soak in, man. It'll right. like evolve with your beard. I had to cut longer. it because this thing was getting massive, and uh, everybody was like, "Oh, you getting all the weight? Are you lifting? Are you just been eating?" <laughs> I'm like, "I'm shaking." It. No, last time I saw you, you didn't even have a beard. So yeah, <laughs> like my first beard. I had my first beard in 2016, and I haven't uh, cut it really since. <laughs> that is what's up. So um, I know a lot of the stuff you do is more on the like darker side of things, which. It's, you know, a lot with, obviously, the moniker and how, you know, a lot of shit you've been through. Um, I know in California, you know, the, between a lot, it's not like your typical West Coast shit. Yeah. So, like, when you were, like, coming up, like, when you were first doing stuff, what was, like, the scene out there, I would say? Was it, I mean, you know, obviously, you guys it's have a band, scene. so yeah, you're yeah, all, it's like, not that dope, scene at all. but... Um, the only thing, like, okay, so in San Jose, you know, the Bay Area is pretty big, so mm -hmm. San Jose, San Francisco, Oakland, and in San Francisco there was a um, trip-hop, gothic, industrial movement, there were separate movements of course, right, gothic, industrial, and then like trip-hop, uh, a lot of people don't know, San Francisco's cutting edge for a lot of things, especially music, they were doing electronica, trip-hop, rave music, all that shit was happening, you know, Germany and Frisco, yeah. the city, you know what I mean, it was like yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweden, San Francisco. I know the and, goth uh, culture out there too. Yeah, the goth culture. Crazy. So it's I was influenced by the San Francisco goth culture a little bit, I mean, it's, it's always intriguing, but I, I heard a lot of the weird alternative industrial music as a, as a small kid, you know, yeah. and I saw Testament, which is more metal, right? Oh yeah. I saw Fear Factory Industrial awesome. when I was like 10 years old, and so yeah. for me, it, it kind of created an interesting path, being a metal hip-hop whatever even though our sound isn't metal i just still like it and that's where some of that goth came from but the scene in san jose that was san francisco san jose didn't have a goth scene that was yeah to, to, we're talking and about I, and i mean you can even in because i listen to a lot of metal like metal punk and hip-hop those are like the three scenes i grew up in and i really i dig a lot of that and you know in some of the bass lines and some of the stuff in your songs you can sort of hear like a heavier almost like metal thing going with it you know on a lot of your songs which is again part of the reason why 
I was sort of like drawn to a lot of stuff that you've done, which I need to learn how to scream and then do lots of crazy <laughs> shit. I don't know how people scream, man. It's, oh yeah. If I try to do it once or twice, if I raise my voice at anybody or anything, it's gone for like a day. I know a friend who like blew his like fucking vocal cord like to going on tour for like 15 days and he just couldn't do it that long, man. Damn. But yeah, that shit's gnarly. Yeah, I think for me, what I always wanted to do, and people may or may not understand this, but you know, um, a lot of times people would try to bring a live element to hip hop and it would give it a sloppy feel. Mm -hmm. I, they always want to make hip hop sound live. I mm -hmm. wanted to make live sound hip hop. If that makes sense, Paxson knows that the idea behind it is like, you have a live band that's so tight that it sounds like they're playing samples and shit. Like it yeah. sounds like they're playing dope hip hop beats that you'd be like, oh, this is like a, you know, D DJ Premier beat, but it's live. <laughs> that was what I wanted because if you, if you think back, you see, you see all these rock rap dudes and all this stuff just bringing a sloppy factor to hip hop. Oh, yeah. And I break dance as a little kid, as a five year old. So I always had respect for the early culture. You know, I liked yeah. Run DMC and all that shit. And so for me, when that when the rock sloppy rock rap came out, I was very like, get the fuck away from me, like Limp Bizkit and things like yeah. that. Sorry to name drop. I know we're getting a little bigger, so if I do that and someone gets mad, nah, sorry, man. <laughs> you seem like, actually, you don't even seem like a nice guy, Frank. <laughs> I don't even know your name. That's how much you mean to me. Frank Durst? <laughs> Frederick Durst? No, no. I don't, I don't even know his music, and it's not even that bad. But I just didn't like that live, sloppy hip-hop feel, and I always wanted to, to do the opposite. I wanted it to be chopping and fast and singing and jazz and symphony and all this shit oh, yeah. that was tight. Click, clack, tick, yeah. tack, tick, tack. And when they're solos, they're tight. Not just all over the fucking place. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, that was my influence. One of the first groups that I can think about that like sort of made me really realize that was the Roots. Like seeing the Roots with like Questlove and Black Thought and all those guys, man, fucking dope. Like, yeah, and they yeah. kind of did a thing similar to us where they didn't sound as live on their albums because mm -hmm. we don't sound as live on our albums. We're we're leaning towards that now. Maybe yeah. the next project we're gonna have a lot more of that. They always had a more tighter, less live feel, but there, yeah. there was live. There was live drums and shit, but not on everything. And then you go see them live, and you get more of it. And that, that was what was dope about the roots. And I, I was a um, big fan of Do You Want More? You know, yeah. that, that, and uh, Illidelph Half Life. Yes. And after that, I kind of didn't listen ever again. I don't know why. You know, I just, yeah. I don't listen to the <laughs> music a lot. So, no, I hear you, but man. those two records are in the iPod yeah. to this day. So. so, going back to some shit we were talking about off camera, Gathering of the Juggalos, 2010. That was like one of the last times I went. Wow. Saw, saw you guys there. So, Honestly, I know you've been a few times as been far four times. Yeah. Yeah. What um, do you have any like favorite moments or anything that really like stick out where you're just like ah, good or bad or both? You know what? Like, this <laughs> last year, we had the greatest. It was our favorite. I think. Right. I mean, this this 2016 was our favorite. Um, coming out of that um, trailer, going into the trailer with nobody in the crowd and nobody side stage. Coming back out a half hour later and it was completely full. Every, as far as I could see, both directions. My uh, Magic Ninja friends, Strange Music friends, Psychopathic friends were all kind of huddled around. They came to watch us, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they don't do that for everybody. They, they came, I came out, Seth Cruz backstage, Mayday's backstage, everybody was back there, you know what I mean? Dope. And so, um, that was one of the greatest moments, just playing daytime for the first time. We, we, we kicked off the gathering when no one else was playing. Yeah. So we didn't, we weren't like a side stage act, we were like the kickoff this last year. So there was nothing else going on and it was dope. It was yeah. dope. It was cool. We never played in the daylight before, so. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Um, another question I, you know, I've wondered too is, um, you know, I, like I said, I know you, you collab with all kinds of, like some of my favorite musicians, I mean, Twisted Insane, you know, Tech Nine. Brother Lynch, cloud with all these badass people. You've been independent for so long, and I'm sure you've had like multiple offers on, you know, doing something. Do you ever think about maybe like starting your own record label or like building up like a roster of people? I mean, I know you're doing your thing, and that's probably like, yeah, a shit ton of work on itself. Yeah. And I know like running a record label is even like crazier, but um, you know, one time we made a Google Doc of like 300 names for a label idea. Yeah, and then. Um, Artists that I was bringing up, like Gorilla Voltage and friends of mine like that, I don't, I didn't want to get into business with my friends. Yeah, yeah. And I become friends with people easily if they're nice people, you know, if they're genuine. 
Yeah. Um, so that's my only qualm about starting our own label is yeah. that I don't really want to get in business with a bunch of people and have people be like, you know, I mean, fuck Kung Fu, man. I don't think they're paying me my yeah, residuals. Yeah. I, nobody's saying fuck Kung Fu right now. We're minding our own True. business. You know? oh, yeah. I'm yeah, the yeah. king of minding my own business. Like, we just do our own thing. We have fun. We're cool with everybody. If you're a dick to us, it's going to be a problem. We got murderers in our squad that are undercover to choke you out. You know what I mean? <laughs> and we're the nicest oh, yeah. guys in the game. You know what I mean? And we love everybody. So we never have problems with anybody. We love everyone. And uh, I just don't want to get in bad with anybody. So that's kind of like a weird reason to not start a label. And I'm sure I could work around it through contracts and things. But I just don't want the stress, man. I just want to make music. You know, and have fun and put on a great show. It's so. understandable shit, man. I mean, hell yeah. Um, going back to more of your influences again. So, you know, like I said, I'm a big metal and punk fan. I know you said Testament, but like, what other like metal bands for like all the metalheads out there? Like, what, like, what do you rock? What really like gets you? Like, even <laughs> nowadays, or yeah. Metallica first, of course. Yeah. <laughs> first and foremost, all the early albums up to the Black Album, mainly up to And Justice for yeah, All. Yeah, yeah. And then. Um, I really liked DRI and Anthrax as a kid. Mm -hmm. I loved like Cry for the Indians and all that stuff, Anthrax, and then uh, I liked some Megadeth. That dude could have been so much more, man. Sorry, Dave Mustaine. <laughs> You're awesome, but he could have been so much more. You're fucking talented and weird. <laughs> um, peace sells, but who's buying? Peace sells, but who's buying? Help me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you, you know what? I, I really liked. Um, like Death Angel, Testament, yeah. and then later on, I really liked Pantera. Like after they were already popular, I found yeah. out about them. And, oh my God! Like I just love Walk and Drag the Body some more. Drag like never before. I can't. I can't fucking do metal oh, yeah. shit. But man, that Pantera album that that has all those hits on it. Walk is it called Walk? Mm -hmm. Last Walk. Yeah. Walk. Yes. Dope. Good. I love that shit. Yeah. Um, metal wise, that's pretty much. And I, I, I actually like classic mm -hmm. rock, man. Talking Heads. Doors. Yeah. That's my shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely, like, especially in some of your beats, man, and some of the stuff you can hear a little bit of all over the place, you know, from, like I said, from harder stuff to a little more, like, classic rock, but a lot of 80s stuff, I, I noticed, like, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we're, we're going to be having a, the new <laughs> album, I'm trying to make it have a heavy 80s theme, like yeah. 80s uh, new wave and stuff like that. Ross, I like the BGs a lot, you oh, know, yeah. things like that, so... I want to implement that. I just I gotta sit down and take some time away from touring, and everything, and just get weird, you know. Yeah. And just write weird eighty shit, and uh, we're remaking an NWA song and a DOC song. And, um, we've never remade anything ever in our life. We've always had originals only. Yeah. So this is something new for us. Yeah. But um, I'm a big eighties new wave fan. Like the Cars too. I know they're like late seventies eighties, but yeah. I like the Cars a lot. Like I could bump man their greatest hits there's like 20 songs yeah. and I like Steely Dan too like I have a weird palette big Steely Dan fan big Bee Gees you know yeah. oh, that's dope like man. that stuff like I like that more than metal like funk yeah. and then 80s new wave and then 80s weird whatever yeah. you want to call it talking head stuff no I feel you man yeah I, I grew up like my mom's side of the family was like jazz and classical music and then my dad's side was like reggae and classic rock like Hendrix Pink Floyd and all that yeah. so that's like where I started and then you know I like Zappa a lot too and I like, like Jefferson. Badass. Is it Jefferson Airplane or Starship? Yeah. That was earlier. Airplane was the first. Starship I like both. Was Starship's good too. They're both, both the Jeffersons. Are good. And I like the oh, TV yeah. show The Jeffersons actually. What was the saying they would always say on The Jeffersons? What was the one thing when he came home he would always say? Does anybody know? Sick on knowledge. Now I'm going to watch that. <laughs> Jeffersons was tight. Oh, yeah. Say Weezy. Was that it? No, Weezy. I don't know. Weezy. Lock, do you know what? Was there a saying on the Jeffersons that was that he's he was a saying, pervert? He's used to call his white neighbor a honky. That was it. <laughs> and then he was the one to always be like. <laughs> he probably banged her. No, he said. Yeah. <laughs> That's that no, shit. Right right? He started like. Here. He started like. Uh, and George Jagger. <laughs> he wore high waters too, huh? He wore some high waters. <laughs> Striped <laughs> suits. <laughs> Dolls them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, like Mick Jagger. Hey, Mick oh. Jagger, yeah. Mick Jagger. Like yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> and George Jefferson. He was so short he played handball up against the curb. Jefferson dry cleans. <laughs> <laughs> So, I know also we were talking about, you know, obviously the live band and 
that you know the powerful element that that brings to a lot of your live shows. Um, do you yourself do you like play any instruments in general or like <laughs> guitar or uh, bass? I, or, I used to. I know you do beats. I and used stuff, to. Yeah, but. I. I I started out playing bass, and uh, I hit a wall really early on that, and I, I started liking drums early. Yeah. And I played drums in junior high school and um, got kicked out of the concert band in junior high uh, to play timpani. They're like, if you want to be in the band, you got to play timpani. You keep playing rock beats and rap beats and like not listening. And then, um, so I was a timpani player my eighth grade year, and then. Uh, freshman year, they wanted me to be the like main drummer for concert band, yeah. and uh, I was. And uh, then uh, the classic story that's like on, I guess it's on my Wikipedia page, I think. But uh, basically, I was playing those rap beats again, and the teacher kept trying to clown me and talk shit. And uh, she was really rude, and she was hella young. We thought she was old, but she was probably 25, but she like an old lady to us, you know? And I basically got up and threw my drumsticks at her all the way across over like the band of 50 people. And uh, like she ducked, you know, and I was like, fuck you, fuck your band, I'm out of here, I'm starting my own shit. And that's when I started rapping. So um, I kind of played drums ever since, and then there was a time I played drums in my bass player and another friend of ours band, and I got good really quick because I had the foundation. I'd been playing for fun all these years. Yeah. And playing in a band, you get good quick because like, I had to learn all these surf, it was like surf Some rock, rock songs yeah. and funk, and I mean, I was up to just styling. And then as soon as I was out of that band, it was back to mediocre me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, um, and I stopped making beats and basically just focus on the music and the live show. You know, the business and the live show. Of course. And speaking of making beats, I know, um, do you, have you ever made beats for like other artists or? I did in the early years, I don't anymore. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know how, how far you ventured into that realm, but was there like one artist that you were like really proud of? Like, fuck yeah, man, that guy used my beat. Like, nah, nah. nah. It's just the, uh, the last beats I made were like I Count and it's like maybe four or five tracks off Dead Sexy. And then I never produced again. It was weird. I just kind of hung the hat up. Um, when I moved, I downsized and I kind of got rid of pieces of gear. And now I just have a couple pieces left and I, I don't miss it. Yeah. We got uh, Chris Paxson at Nexus Audio, our drummer. He um, has a state of the art studio. So, you know, if your friend drives a, a Bentley and you drive a Hyundai with the missing wheel, you like, just get rid of the Hyundai. Yeah. Go call your boy up and be like, hey, take the Bentley yeah, yeah, yeah. out. You know what I mean? There's no reason for me to have a little studio. I have a home set up for, for verses or whatever. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah I just had to pick. I couldn't do everything. No, sure, so. I understand. Um, another thing I know we were talking about off camera too is how like a lot of your songs are based in reality, and you know, uh, I, I it's interesting because you know artists that are sort of do kinds of music that you know you do in a way like they take darkness and they make it to so others can find light mm -hmm. from it, and um, I guess what would be your way of explaining maybe the yin the yin and yang of the fame, or just your way of bringing yeah, yeah. like lightness out of like dark situations to people. Yeah, I just it's just strictly a balanced thing, man. I, I always I want our music to be as organic as possible. It's nowhere near where where I think it can be yet. It, mm -hmm. It's good, but it's not where I think it can be. I just want it to be organic, and I feel like uh, if you try to make certain types of music, it's not going to be organic. So if you make if you make light music, happy music, you're really forcing it. You're not being balanced. If that's all you make. Sure, I mean, I'm like one of the happiest guys I know. And, and my people will all tell you that, like, the dude's never really moody, pretty happy. I'm getting happier as time goes on. He's still not happy all the time, man. You gotta make some dark shit to balance it out. So I always am a little skeptical of, like, I people don't, that are too fucking just happy. Just like evangelists or people who work at churches that I know. I hate to bring up church or whatever, I'm sorry, but I do know some pastors and shit that are just always happy to, like, eh probably beating your wife or something dude you're probably smoking heroin there's something off you know i just don't feel that that's uh genuine yeah to always be one or the other same with dark i think it's really uh selfish to uh always be like oh i'm always dark i'm always depressed like you're a bitch dude yeah. fucking watch netflix smoke a joint get your dicks up you have to pay for it do that but don't go around acting pissed and sad and mad at the world you're lucky to be alive like there's people suffering way worse than you and and just like for people who are the best, there's always someone better. It's the same thing. If you're struggling, there's always someone struggling more. You know what I mean? It's like you see these workout videos, right? These uh, army veterans 
they're fucking 45 years old, they're missing a leg. They might not even have a dick because they lost it in the war and they're shredded doing one arm pull-ups, killing it, living life, fine ass wife. It's like, you're gonna complain about your life, this dude doesn't even have a dick or a leg and he's murdering it. He's up there yoked. I seen the video on my own eyes. I seen the shit. <laughs> this is what happens when this guy gave me one shot of tequila Just one. and the shit's going <laughs> overboard. No, oh, yeah. um, but that's that's how I feel. You can't always be dark. You can't always be light. There has to be balance, and I'm trying to bring that balance to music and to everything. So, you know, a lot of people who like my darker shit, they're like, "Yo, man, he's changing. He's doing happy shit." Boom, they get hit with a dark one. So, we're gonna keep doing that. Oh yeah, cool, man. Um, another thing is, again, I was talking about, you know, a lot a lot of your songs. You know, you have some songs where you rap slower, some songs faster, some songs where you do both in all the songs. Um, what helped you like? get to where you could like switch it up and just get to that level like is it, I mean obviously you know I know you probably studied a lot of people and, you know I just started rapping fast nah, I just started rapping yeah. fast early and I don't know why I mean it was like 90s late 90s as a teenager yeah. you know what I mean mm-hmm. I was rapping fast so um, I think I kind of talked fast and I was an athlete you know super like energized yeah. and uh I remember one of the first verses I wrote that was fast and still was, I feel like I could spit it today and it would be a good verse. And it's like, when I'm lit like lightning to where I'm mad and they got Miss Fear, high as fuck, got fash in a keef and I sprinkled it up on the leaf, no tears. And like, that's from like late 90s. And like, uh, I wasn't influenced by fast rap. I think I just didn't want to do the slow Bay Area sound that everybody yeah. was doing and like the hyphy shit. So I kind of like, I'm always like, oh, I'll do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. If you had to like pick three, top three favorite vampire movies that are in existence right <laughs> That's now. a popular question on this tour, I like that. Blade. Lost Boys. Lost Boys, Blade 2 and 3. <laughs> yeah. uh, I like Blade and, and Lost Boys and, and um, Salem's Lot. Those are my three yeah. favorites. That's, that's, there's other ones that I like. I like John Carpenter's Vampires, pretty decent. Um, Dust Till Dawn, man. And, and as part of a two-part question, if you had to pick one martial artist to rule them all, like one guy that just take most fights. Oh, like, Jet Li. Yeah. Period. Donnie Yen, maybe second. Donnie Chuck Yen, Norris. Jet Li. Who? <laughs> Chuck Norris. <laughs> Chuck Norris. He's pretty badass. Bruce Lee killed him. I want movie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going with Jet Li or Donnie Yen, man. Word. Jet Li's the truth. It's Word. funny, you know, people just... Popularity, popularity, and people don't know about Jet Li, his martial arts are amazing. Oh, yeah, man. Um, and so I guess pretty much just going to end it out um, with as far as this year is concerned. I mean, I know you're doing your tour and stuff like that. Um, I know you're working on more music. I, do you have any, like, books or any kind of, like, screenplays or any kind of crazy stuff going on? Touchy right subject. Now? That's where I'm slipping really bad in life. I have all that shit written and a lot of stuff done, and I, I'm a. Uh, basically, I mean, I know basically I'm timid and scared to fucking release it because it means so much to me. So I don't know what I'm gonna do now. Yeah. I have a novel written, and I may just turn it into comics. I think the smart thing to do is turn it into a six part series of comic books, mm-hmm. and then have it boost into a movie, which is what I want to do. But man, just time flies. Yeah. The story's awesome, and I love it. It's dear to me, but it's just like. You know, I've written books. I have like a few books and short stories oh, yeah. and stuff. But you know, I have my own genre. I don't. I don't think it exists. I made it my own genre, and it's called um, some subconscious nonfiction. Yeah. So the reason why I called it subconscious nonfiction is every book I wrote, I didn't ever sat down and wrote a book before. Yeah. Um, they come from dreams or like nightmares or flu, like when you have the high fever. Mm-hmm. We call it like a fever dream, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they all come from that. My novel is a fever dream. I woke up and wrote like an 85 page summary uh, by the side of the bed at six in the morning from this this nightmare. And um, that's kind of the basis behind the story of Kung Fu Vampire. So that stuff is all to me called subconscious nonfiction because it really happened. I didn't make it up, so it's not fake, right? Mm -hmm. Which could be argumented, argued, but I could argue a pretty good strong point that it did happen. It just happened while I was sleeping. So. Since we don't have all the answers of how those that neurological path exists and what plane it's on, and and is there a higher thing that controls that? Mm-hmm. 
until then, I'm calling my shit subconscious nonfiction because that shit happened. I didn't make any of it up. No. My brain did it without my knowledge, so. Oh, yeah, man. So, I mean, for the rest of the year, beyond the tour, is what's... This what? is just part one. Part two begins September 6th in Sacramento, does the Northwest, all of Canada, and some of the Midwest. So, yeah. So we're doing everything we didn't do on this, and then we're going to have to do a part three to finish it off. East Coast, some other things. Gathering appearance this year? Can't can't discuss that yet. <laughs> I'm not sure, man. Word. Things are going good, though. I'll say that. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. Well, it has been a pleasure. Chop shit up with you, man. Thank you. Take he's, it easy. He's out bearding me. Safe travels. Yes. Thank <laughs> you, brother. <laughs>